Hey, hello everybody. Do you hear me? Do you see me? Yes, yes I can hear you. So welcome after the Christmas break. Uh, today the room was only open briefly before the, the class. That's why we had a, a little delay. So I hope you are doing well. Thank you, Florian. I have a, a number of collaborators who help me here. <laughs> so we are in lecture number 10. So <clears throat> our title is still differential equation. Actually, I think I never told you what Fuchsian means here. But this is to increase the excitement. Uh, and we are in number 10, January. Today is the 12th. OK. So what is the program today? We will talk about p curvature, characteristic p and characteristic 0. And we will revise a little bit what we have done up to now. So <clears throat> what is the setting? We have, as always, we have k a field. At the beginning, k will be arbitrary, but later we will take either k q or k equals q alpha, a number field. So this will be the characteristic zero situation. Or k is fp or extension of fp, and this would be characteristic p. So Whenever we are over Q, we may reduce modulo P, provided that all involved denominators are not divisible by P. And that's what we are going to do. OK, so <coughs> let me LB. So I will, <coughs> I will work just in this polynomial or rational coefficients, del. We could also think here of power series, but we don't need it. We write, as always, L equals a n del n plus a n minus 1. We have seen this now 25 times, plus a1 del plus a0, a i in kx, our differential operator, differential operator of order n. OK? And then we get from this the differential equation, Ly equals 0. And we are interested in the solutions. The solutions, y equals y of x. And of course, we have to, we know that the space of solutions is a vector space. But we have to be careful uh, over what field. So the, the solution space is a vector space of dimension. Typically, if you look at the right space of functions of dimension n, is a vector space over the field of constants. And we know already that we have to allow power series solutions and maybe even logarithms. So the constants are very different according to the characteristic. So in characteristic 0, this is just k. But in positive characteristic, we can take power series in x to the p. Okay. Here I don't consider the z yet without zi for the moment. 
you remember that the zi played the role of the logarithms. Okay. So <clears throat> this is the, the outset. And as you have certainly already heard and maybe uh, seen in other occasions, you can rewrite your differential equation also as a system of first order equation. So associate to Ly equals 0 a first order system. I think I did this at the beginning of the class, but I never did it in detail. A first order system. <coughs> now I will write Y prime, capital Y, A times Y, where Y is now a vector of variables. And I take it as a column to have this matrix multiplication vector of variables. And A is an n by n matrix with coefficients, polynomials or rational functions, OK, matrix. Now, how do you go from L to A? So <clears throat> sometimes I will write this as A sub L and call it the companion matrix. of L. So that's a trick you have seen in your elementary classes on differential equations. You take y1 equals y, y2 equals y prime, and capital YN equals yn minus 1. And then the AL has the following shape. You will have zeros here. Then on the first diagonal, you have ones. You have zero above. And below, here you have, I think I wrote this already. How do I want to write it? I want to write it b0 up to bn minus 1. And the bi are just, you have to take care if you count the coefficients starting with n or with 0, but here, if I'm not mistaken, the bi <coughs> is minus ai over an. Okay, so this is again an element in kx. Of course, an is non-zero. So this is a very special shape of matrix, and of course, whenever you have a solution of l of y equals zero, you will get a solution of y capital Y prime equals AY. So clear. Every solution of LY equals 0 will yield a solution of Y prime equals AY. I I will use the system a little bit later on. That's why I introduce it again. OK? Now, we have taken here this very special matrix. Uh, but of course, we could think of this equation here, y prime equals a y, for any matrix A with n trace rational functions. No? So, <coughs> uh, more generally, take any A in Mn kx and consider y prime equals A y as a system as a first order system. Can you read here? Let me check. Yes. Yeah, approximately. OK. So some of you have been already in my class two years ago. So we were 
did this, and I will put it in the notes with, with more details. I will just sketch here what is going on. So we see this from the, this I call Ly equals 0. Let me call this a scalar differential equation. Excuse me, did, did you write something under uh, the line with uh, y prime equals Ay? Here? Yeah, is there a line under it? Because if so, I can't see this line. Yes, as a first order system, it is written. Okay. It's not so necessary, so you, I will, yeah. Thank you. You just consider this system of equation, yeah? So the question is, if you take now is this a general system like this, whether it comes from a scalar equation. Now, uh, if we look at this here, we get an operator, our, our node, if we write <coughs> uh, del minus a, we can have this act. Let's take just power series, but vectors of power series, n, or Laurent series, n. Let me call this gamma. OK. Excuse me. So this map here is linear, and it is called is called a connection on the k x module k x to the n. What is the definition of connection? Uh, if you take G in Kx and F a vector of this module, then gamma of G times F is, you just, so del here now acts on each component, and A is matrix multiplication. So you get G prime F plus G the gamma of F. Easy to check. I leave it to you. That's a linear map, a k-linear map, with this property is called the connection on this module. And then you know already from linear algebra, you don't want to look at these modules with a given basis. Here we have considered with y1 up to yn, the standard basis, we could take any basis here. So if you take any basis, then we, in some sense, we, our map here becomes basis independent. And the following happens. Uh, if we apply here a base change, base change in kx, to the n corresponds to a matrix P, which is P of x, of Laurent series, GL n k x. Okay. Just multiplication by this matrix. But then our differential equation will also change this changes y prime equal a y because we multiply y, the vector y with p, under replacing, I hope you can read, y by p times y. That's an allowed change here whenever we look at the solutions. Okay, so. How does this affect your dif our differential equation? So I will uh, erase only half of it. <clears throat> it's a, this is a very famous transformation of differential equation, which is called gauge transformation. So let me write it down. The formula is 
not very difficult. But even though the formula is not very difficult, the background is quite complicated. So the new equation, again, a system will be y prime equals b times y, where b B is almost the conjugation of A by P. So it will be P inverse A P. But then we have an additional term, an additive term, which is P, in P inverse P prime. Recall, P has entries in power series, Laurent series, so we can derive it. So this kind of matrix transformation, this is again in mn k x, is the gauge transformation of A with respect to P. Okay, So that's <coughs> Very unusual. In invariant theory, you usually have just conjugations. But here you have a, a derivation inside. And this makes things complicated. So now, if you start with an arbitrary matrix A, so the question will be, given y prime equals a y with a in k x n times n matrices, okay. Can we find P in GLN k of x such that if we take the transform uh, let me now call it A tilde equals P inverse A P plus P inverse P prime equals A L, the companion matrix, for some differential operator. L in K. Yeah, though I still want to have it with coefficients. Maybe I should allow here something like that. I should allow coefficients which are from a power series. And the answer is yes. But the proof is not very satisfying because it goes a detour. So if you Google cyclic vector lemma, then you will find the construction not of P, but the procedure which algorithmically produces this transformation. Okay? So this the up, upshot is nth order scalar equations one has to take a little bit of care where you take them. <clears throat> but if you, if you, you allow coefficients, uh, Laurent series formally or holomorphic functions, meromorphic functions, not a problem, are equivalent to first order systems. So some authors prefer to work with the scalar equation. So this would be here. Ly equals 0. And here we have a, sorry, y prime equals a times y. So you can play on both sides. No? We have done mostly 
this color side, local exponents, singularities, uh, normal forms, uh, we did not work with the system side. Okay, but you can do it, and I will define the P curvature in both settings. Okay? So we have several exercises. <clears throat> so first you could try to prove the existence of such a P. Uh, but I want to give you another exercise, which is uh, on the scalar side, we define the singularities and the local exponents. <clears throat> and I want you, or I would like to invite you to see how to compute the local exponents of the scalar equations in terms of the matrix A. Express the singularities and local exponents of Ly equals 0 in terms of the matrix AL. Okay. It's not very difficult, but it is very useful to do it. OK, any questions so far? So I apologize if some of you are already familiar with this material. So I want to give you a third interpretation of differential equations, uh, which goes by linear recurrences. Now, this only works for power series solutions formal or convergent, but it, it goes uh, quite straightforward. You do an ansatz to solve. Now I'm back to the scalar situation, Ly equals 0. <coughs> uh, apply an unknown Ansatz, I never know whether you write German words in English with capital letters or small letters. I do it with a capital letter. So you are right of it, y of x equals sum ckx to the k. So here we don't consider logarithmic solutions. We just do elementary combinatorics. 0 to infinity. So we plug it in, plug it into the equation. And so here, when we do this, I will assume that L, that L has polynomial or rational coefficients. So you can always assume when you have rational functions to put them into polynomials by multiplying with the denominator. To plug it into the equation and get a linear recurrence. So CK will be. So <coughs> let me write it like this. P1 of k, c k minus 1. So this is a preceding coefficient of our power series. Plus, and this goes down to some pd of k, c k, k minus d. So this is a linear recurrence of order d. And uh, as as our L has polynomial coefficients, these here, these will be polynomials in P, in K, sorry. PI, small pi polynomials in K. 
That's very easy to show. And to go back, you have to do a little bit more. But So this is equivalent if you just restrict to power series solution. Okay, So this is now uh, the CK are called to form a P-recursive sequence. So that's something which is mostly considered in combinatorics. You take sequences of numbers, and you have some recurrence in between them. So definition sequences C K K in N as before are called P recursive, P for polynomial recursive. Or D finite or holonomic. So, and so D finite is mostly reserved to the generating function series. So Y of X, CK, X to the K is the generating series of CK. In N. Now you can you can just start with this a sequence of CKs and and then go to the differential equation. Now, important case when this D, which is called the order of the recurrence, if D is one. Okay. Ah, I forgot something. I think I want to put here, excuse me, I want to put the, the polynomial factor P0 of K in front. I hope you can read it. Let me check. Uh, it's not very nice, but maybe I erase a little bit. Sorry to have it properly written. linear recurrence, and here we have P0, K, CK. And P0 is also a polynomial. You could put it also on the other side to have rational functions. But you see already, when P0 of K vanishes, we have a problem. I will come back to this in a moment. If d equals 1, uh, Either y of x or the sequence is called hypergeometric. C k k in n and <coughs> y of x are called hypergeometric. Okay. So you just step down one step to express C k in terms of the preceding one. So for instance, the Fibonacci sequence, which goes back two steps, is not hypergeometric. Okay. I call it hypergeometric. So <clears throat> whenever k is such that p0 of k equals 0, one has to impose initial conditions. Prescribing the value of CK. OK, so that's an extra input, but don't worry too much about it. For instance, if P0 has no integer solutions, then you don't care about this. Okay. Now, exercise. Exercise. 
here appears this order d, and it should be related to the, our differential equation L, or to our differential operator. Compute d in terms of L. And it has nothing to do with the order of L, but it has to do with the, with the shifts of L. Use the shifts of L. So recall, the shifts were the differences of the exponents of x and of del, okay? i minus j. i minus j, okay? So <clears throat> this is a little bit more special than arbitrary differential equations because we only have, we only have power series solutions. But we are also happy like this uh, because it gives us a more combinatorial flavor, okay? Now, we can do the same for our system. Uh, similarly, so for systems, if we have y prime equals a times y, and we have a solution capital Y, then we can write Y again, and now I write capital CK, X to the K, again as a power series, but now a matrix of power series, K equals zero to infinity. CK now in MM K matrices. And again, we get, uh, by just plugging in, we get now a system of recur uh, so a, a system of recurrences for the CK. Similarly, we obtain a linear recurrence for the CK, now as matrices, okay? And you can play around to go from one to the other side. I don't do this. Um, yes? Me, aren't the CKs uh, column vectors instead of matrices? Ah, okay. yeah, sure, 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 sure. Thank you, Raphael, very uh, attentive. I don't want to erase because I always have to use the machine and that's annoying, but this is in K to the N, of course, yeah. Actors. Okay, so <clears throat> essentially we have now uh, four different ways to play around. We can look at the scalar equation, we can look at the system of first order equation, we can look at linear recurrences for the scalar equation, linear recurrences for the matrices or for the vectors, and then we can also directly talk about uh, what is called differential modules. I mentioned this, I think, in one of the first lectures at the beginning, just for completeness. So there is a big theory called the theory of D modules and of micro-local analysis, treating all this business from a much more axiomatic and general viewpoint. And a brief indication about differential modules, alternative. We could look at, <clears throat> now let me take again differential operators with coefficients power series or Laurent series. You can factor out L. So all multiples. This is the ideal, the, the left ideal. Left ideal generated by L, so this is 
just r times l r in k x l and this is called differential module or d module so there are whole books on d modules and this captures all information we need about about our scalar equation so captures all relevant information in a more general setting. Okay, and actually, one can describe the solutions of Ly equals zero completely in terms of this module. So if you want to know more about this, there's a, a famous book by Björk called D modules. And then there is also a nice anecdote. The big boss, oh my, not, that's not maybe not right to say it like this, but one of the protagonists of the theory of D models is Kashiwara. And Kashiwara became famous already for his master thesis. which revolutionized this field. Yeah. It's very hard to read. Of course, he has many more papers than his master thesis. OK. So maybe I can add here something to the hypergeometric case. So there are, in the hypergeometric case, there are two versions. If the differential operator has order two, then this is usually called Gauss hypergeometric. Okay. Maybe I can add this here. Gauss hypergeometric corresponds to order of L equals two and three singular points. Okay. Yeah, let me just keep it like this. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just make a short excursion to Gauss. So we consider <clears throat> L in K. Now I'm back to polynomial or rational coefficients, del order two, hypergeometric. So hypergeometric for the differential operator means that uh, this is again an exercise, but I write it down the answer. L is L0 plus L1, both Euler, L0, L1 Euler operators. And the shift of L0 is 0, and the shift of L1 is 1. OK, so this is a translation from the recurrences back to the differential operator. This is an exercise. OK, not very hard to show. And I hope that I can also put it in the notes, but if you send me the exercise, I'll be happy to quote you. So <clears throat> we have with three singular points, in now, as we as is classical in this theory, you also look at infinity, so P1 of k. And here, think of k equals c for the moment, OK, in the projective line. So now, 
you have the action of Möbius transformations on P1K. Möbius transformations, transformation Z goes to AZ plus B CZ plus D on P1 is three transitive. What does three transitive means? That any three distinct points can be sent by a Möbius transformation to any other three distinct points. OK, I repeat. Three trans transitive means any point can be moved anywhere, but three transitive is that you can move triples to any other triples, provided the entries of the triples are distinct. So the three singular points in P1K, so you can move them by a Möbius transformation, which does not change the quality of your differential equation, to special positions. Hence, allows us to move the singular points to 0, 1, infinity. Okay. So that's the first step. And apparently, this was already done by Gauss. And then he even gave a normal form, a different type of normal form than we were talking about, uh, I get normal form for Ly equals 0. You have certainly, or many of you have seen this. Uh, oh, these, maybe I should call these alpha, beta, gamma, delta. It doesn't matter, no. So we have x times x minus 1 y double prime plus c minus a plus b plus 1. Well, this has nothing to do. So maybe I should, yeah. These are new ABCs. Forget about them. Call them these tildes. Sorry. Times x y prime plus a b y equals 0. Now. In a book of cuts, which I, I maybe a couple of years ago, I looked before I entered in this topic, I opened a book of cuts, and he started with this equation without explanation why this is relevant. And I thought, that's very special. But by the argument I just gave, this is the most general situation, because up to Möbius transformations, you can bring it in this form with a, B, C, the parameters in C. Now, in most cases, one reduces to rational parameters. Most often, A, B, C are rational numbers. And for reasons I'll explain in a moment, one assumes that z is not a negative integer or 0. Okay. And that's the classical version of the Gauss hypergeometric differential equation. And this c different from a negative number or 0 ensures that the solution of these equations involve no logarithms. Okay. No logs in solution. Now, how does this solution look like? Also, this is classical. We have two solutions. Maybe I erase here so I have a little bit more space. And I, <coughs> I invite you to, to compute the linear recurrence related to the hypergeometric equation, not very difficult. OK. So <clears throat> I 
So these A, B, C are called the parameters of the hypertermitic equation. And bum, 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 we have y1 is, now this notation is also standard, 2f1 a b c x, sometimes written 2f1 a b c and x. And that's the hypergeometric series k equals 0 to infinity, a k rising factorial, b k rising factorial, c k rising factorial, 1 k rising factorial, x to the k. So where a k is a plus times a plus 1 up to a plus k minus 1. So we have k factors, okay, rising factorial. So many authors write instead of this, you also see a sub k. But I think this bar of the k is also very suggestive. So and of course the 1 k is just k factorial. So this has notational reasons why you include here a k factorial. Okay. This is the first solution. And the second one, y2 is uh, just uh, essentially a factor with the different parameters, 2, f1. But now you have to take different parameters, a plus 1 plus a minus c, 1 plus b minus c, and then 2 minus c and x. Okay, And here you we use uh, that c is not in z less than 1. Okay. So that's a very beautiful and explicit theory in combinatorics with many identities and all kind of business. So we have, I give you the list of exponents. At 0, we have 0 and 1 minus c. At 1, we have 0 and c minus a minus b. So often one also assumes that c minus a minus b is not an integer. Uh, the, you remember, if the exponents differ by an integer, then we may get logarithms at infinity, we just get a and b. Okay, So <clears throat> I don't write down some extra conditions, but you see the flavor. OK, so uh, this was a little bit on hypergeometric functions. I will come back to this. But before doing so, we will have a short five minutes break. I can take some water. You can also relax a little bit, and we meet immediately again. OK, hello. So I think we can continue. And <coughs> we now come, after this small sidestep to hypergeometric functions, and they will appear again later on, we will come to the p curvature. <coughs> I already briefly talked about the p curvature, this was suggested by Grotendieck and elaborated by Katz. But I want to insist a little bit more and give you a couple of results, mostly without proofs. And uh, <clears throat> I want to define it now in all different settings. So you see, uh, whenever you need, you can work on the side of scalar equations or systems. That's quite convenient. So I will give you several equivalent definitions. Yeah. So <clears throat> let now k have 
positive characteristic P. And uh, you consider the ring of differential operators. OK, now we strictly restrict to polynomial coefficients as a non-commutative ring with, <clears throat> now you have again here a Euclidean division, but you have to distinguish between right and left Euclidean division with right and left Euclidean division. So if you have M L in K X del, then you can write M equals R times L, and this is just as maps, it's the composition of the differential operators plus S. And the condition is the order of S is strictly smaller than the order of M. And this is unique. Just the usual Euclidean division. But of course, you have to take care between right and left. So maybe you, I will give you <coughs> one example where you can see how this works. But uh, it's tedious to compute. So in particular, we have here this composition. So example, not very, uh, not very exciting. I just compute the product of two operators because they will have a certain significance. x, x minus 1, uh, pop -pop, del, first order, plus 60. 6x minus 36, and L2 equals del plus 1 over 6x. So I allow here, if you would like, you could also take L3 equals x del plus 1 over 6, if you prefer, if you want to have polynomial coefficients. And then <coughs> what do we get if we compose these two? So you get 36x, x, x minus 1, del square, plus 6, 12x minus 7, del, plus 5. Now this, I give you this example not just because you can multiply, but this is now what is called the reducible operator because it is, has a factorization. L is a reducible operator. Reducible operator and hypergeometric. So of order two. Yeah, because if you look here, you have <coughs> the the shift here is minus one and zero, okay? The only shifts are <coughs> minus one and zero. Of course, if you multiply, if you divide by x, you would get shifts zero and one. Okay, uh, so this is hyperdramatic with parameters a equals 1, 6, b equals 5 over 6, c equals 7 over 6 at 0. Of course, this is local. So now, the interesting thing is that Ly equals 0 has two very different solutions. Namely, y1 is just x to the 
minus 1 sec, so this is 1 over the sixth root of x. So this is an algebraic. So you could say it is a Laurent or monomial, even monomial, if you allow rational exponents. And y2, so this is actually also a hypergeometric function, as all such uh, rational monomials. And the second one is 2f1, precisely of our parameters, 5 over 6, 7 over 6, x. And this one is transcendental. So not algebraic, which you can prove by using the asymptotics. <coughs> uh, here, the asymptotics give you this. Okay. Now, this is interesting because whenever the operator is irreducible, and has one algebraic solution, then all other solutions are algebraic. This is something Michael Singer told me. So remark, L irreducible in the sense prescribed before with one algebraic solution y1 of x, then all other solutions are also algebraic. OK? So this, <clears throat> I will put it in the notes. It's not very difficult to prove. But it's kind of surprising that the, the quality of the solutions could be quite different. Okay. Now, of course, the irreducibility is something tough, yeah, because it's, uh, in general, it's very hard to check whether an operator is irreducible or not. Okay. So this was the preparation for the p-curvature. So now definition. How am I running with the time? Yeah. Number one, today I have a fantastic pen. I'm happy with it. The P curvature of L in Kx del is the remainder N of the Euclidean division. You divide del to the power p r times l plus n. So the order of n is less than the order of l. Okay. So that's very strange yeah, because it's just algebra. No? So this n should have some significance. Okay. Of course, you can define whatever you want, but you have to show once in a while that it is useful and interesting. Number two. For today, I just give you these definitions without further explanation. The P curvature of <coughs> y prime equals a y, a in mn is defined recursively we take a1 equals a a2 equals a prime plus a1 times a which is a1 square and then we continue a k plus 1 is 
a k prime plus a one a k <coughs> taking then a p in k x. Okay. Again, giving the definition like this, one does not see anything. Okay. Yes. Is it uh, a k prime plus a one a k? Uh, I see the Here, a, it is AK prime. You cannot. There, there should be uh, AK uh, in the second term. This, one, this is coming from uh, that is true, uh, I think. Can you maybe, uh, maybe, can you read the, the whole line until here? Uh, I, um, the line for me ends uh, with the third A. I don't see if there is a. Ah, so I write it again. Wait. So, A K prime plus A one A K. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't see the. the ah, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I have to take care here. Yes. So you, but you are an expert in P curvature, so I don't have to tell you the formula in any case, okay? So this is our AP, and one has to check that these two correspond to each other, of course. <clears throat> so I give you a, a third definition, but I have to do this again. So, <clears throat> For the students, those who are maybe at the beginning of their career, whenever you, you are in a class or in a, in a lecture where such definitions are given and they are just given formally, you can always interrupt and ask, why do you define this like this? No? I mean, the algebraic definition doesn't tell you anything if you don't really work with it, okay? So we will work with it a little bit later. Number three, or maybe I can even write it here, three. Now we take m equals kxn, the module, the d module, with connection, any connection gamma, but think of uh, del minus a, then we can take this <coughs> gamma and compose it p times with itself. So this will be a map from m to m, a map between kx modules, okay? And this is, of course, linear, k linear, and it will involve differentiation. But as the p-fold differentiation del p gives you zero in characteristic p, this is even kx linear. Exercise. I hope you, you enjoy to do the exercises and you do them. This is even kx linear, and as we have a free kx module uh, corresponding to a matrix. Uh, can I still write here? No, maybe. To a matrix A, P, and this is the same as in two. It's P cut. So I think it's always nice to have several definitions of the same object and then uh, also to have the equivalence, which I skip here because of lack of time and lack of energy. But I will put them in the notes and you can try it meanwhile on your own. Okay. So, <clears throat> so what is the significance? Uh, there are various interpretations, and uh, for instance, why it is called curvature. But 
One way to see that this is an interesting object is uh, <clears throat> we are now in a fixed characteristic P. Whenever AP is zero, one can solve the linear recurrences. So I will give you I will give you in terms of matrices. So if you have Y as before, capital C K X to the K, C K in K to the N vectors, okay, solution of y prime equals a y, then the, the recursion, which I'm not going to down, write down in detail, involves uh, these matrices a k. So you get then the recursion k times c k. And this will be now a function which I call h, maybe h of c0 up to cn. I think not all ck minus 1, not all are involved, <coughs> uh, becomes 0 equal something whenever p divides k. So the term you have here, so this is the right-hand side. If this one is not 0, you get a contradiction. So the right-hand side equals 0, and one has to check this, is equivalent to say that AP is a P curvature 0. So it, the vanishing of the P curvature ensures that you can solve your recurrence, and then you get power series solutions. I get power series solutions and no logarithms. OK? Very good. So I have a little, oh, I'm running out of time. I wanted to give you some examples. But in any case, we will have our class on Tuesday. So Papa Bob, yeah, I'm not going to talk about the lemma. These will come on Tuesday. But let me just give, uh, where do I have a nice example? Uh, yes, examples. And here I have to, to give credit to Sergei Jokovic and Florian Fjernsin, who compute lots of examples. And I just give you the first one. You will see more uh, on Tuesday. Very harmless uh, differential operator, x squared plus d 1 del minus 1. So we solve Ly equals 0. So this means <coughs> y prime is y x squared plus 1. And this already suggested an arc tangent to the peer solution. y of x is the exponential of the arc tangent. Okay, which is the power series. Now I'm again in characteristic zero at the beginning. It's transcendental. Okay. Now we can reduce mod p. Mod p. The p curvatures are. Now, this will depend on P. 
So if you take P equal 5, 13, 17, 29, 37, and so on, then we get equal 0. And if we take P equals the remaining ones, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 19, and so on, then the P curvature, now expressed in terms of the remainder n, equals just an operator of order 0. Now I, could, I have to continue here. So the equals 2 divided by x squared plus 1 to the power p. OK? So very strange behavior that for essentially half of the prime numbers, you get p curvature 0. And for the other half, you get always the same to the power p. And so it's not always 0, especially it's non-zero for infinitely many primes. And this will appear in the Grotendieck P curvature conjecture, saying that when the P curvatures are zero for almost all P, which means for all but finitely many P, then the solutions are algebraic. So you see, it does not suffice to have P curvature zero for infinitely many primes. You need it for almost all. Okay. So this is a very critical example, and uh, nice to see the subtlety of the uh, so, object. Sorry, Herbig. Yes. Uh, the, the prime number five is. Uh, is twice. Yes, that's correct. Is twice. Yes. Yeah, no, it's not twice. Of course, you are right. I made a mistake. Now you can guess where it is wrong. Here it is wrong. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, this was an obvious mistake, but I missed it. <laughs> okay. So. I think we are already almost over time, so I will stop here for today. So I hope you can enjoy a little bit. So on Tuesday, I will give you several results relating the peak curvature, the nil potents of the peak curvature. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to give you very long or difficult proofs. I will mostly sketch the ideas, because otherwise we will end not before Easter. So we have next week one class, and then the week afterwards we finish already. So I hope to, to give you a, a nice and interesting final uh, part of this course. And for today, I say goodbye. And I wish you a wonderful evening. And please look at the exercises. I will put them on the website soon. As for the notes, I'm delayed. I'm horribly delayed, but, but I will complete them in due time, uh, hopefully before Easter. And please really try to do the exercise, because then you will, end, you will have more fun and capture better the ideas. OK, see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.